Good morning. Good to be in God's house this beautiful Easter morning. Good to be able to be here. And this is a great crowd. It's good to see you here and those that can't be here. We hope you have a great day also. Um, do we have any first time folks here for the first time? Raise your hand if you're here for the very first time. Granddaughter, Leland Dishman's granddaughter. I only call out the names that I know. <laughs> Rita, Rita, Rita and Leland's granddaughter. Good to have you. I know they're glad to see you here too. Um, oh, right there's one. What's your name? Pierce, good to have you, Pierce. Do we have any birthdays this week? Mr. Long? Isaac McCracken. Isaac McCracken? <laughs> Janelle, my wife. <laughs> Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you what I told her. 58 never looked so good. <laughs> yeah. I guess I shared that, but... And it didn't. It hasn't. Okay. I'm sorry? Thank you. All right, well, let's sing. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, God bless you, happy birthday to you. Any anniversaries this week? What are your names? Dustin and Carrie. Justin. Justin and Carrie. 25 years. 25 years. Any more? I'm singing to y'all. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. At this time, I'm going to ask those that will join us in the choir. We've got a, and we also have a couple of specials this morning too, uh, but come up and help us sing, if you will.
placed on his head. He knew that he would soon be dead. He said, did you forget me, Father, did you? They nailed him to a wooden cross. Soon all the world would feel the loss of Christ. hung his head and prepared to die, then lifted his face up to the sky, said, I am coming home now, Father, to you. A reed which held his final sip was gently lifted to his lips. He drank his last and gave The soldier who had used his sword to pierce the body of our Lord said, truly, this was Jesus Christ, our Savior. He looked with fear upon his sword, then turned to face his Christ and Lord. his head the thorny crown and wrapped him in a linen gown then laid him down to rest inside the tomb the holes in his hands his feet his side now in our days went by, again they came to move the stone to bless the slain with oil and spice anointing, hallelujah. But as they went to move the stone, they saw that they were not alone, for Jesus Christ has risen.
Somebody's running out of time Not too far from here Somebody's got nowhere else to go Somebody needs a little hope Not too far from here And I may Somebody's forgotten how to trust. Somebody's dying for love. Not too far from here. It may be a stranger's face, but I'm praying for your grace to move in me and take away the fear. Somebody's hurting not too far from here. Help me, Lord, not to turn away from pain. Help me not to rest while those around me weep. Give me your strength and compassion. When somebody finds the road of love to Well, it's good to be here today, and it's a blessing to see everyone that has come out to be with us, and um, you folks have done something that I couldn't do, and I want to encourage every one of you to come back next Sunday and help me out again, and what it is, we've got some folks on the front rows up here we haven't had up in a long time, so... uh, uh, So come on back and help me out. I need all the help I can get. But good to have everybody, all the visitors. We're thankful to have you. Uh, Just thank God for every one of you. And I prayed a lot and thought a lot about the service today. And I got some scripture I'd like to read to you. It's found over in Mark chapter 16, if you'd like to uh, turn and read with me. And you know, this is a, a special day that we're worshiping the risen Savior. A lot of people over time has claimed to be Jesus, and a lot of them have died and they're still dead. But there was one that was the Son of God. Jesus Christ himself came to this earth and gave his life that we could have eternal life, and he rose again. And we wonder 
you know, uh, people have wondered over the years why that we set aside Sunday to worship God. We're worshiping a risen Savior. And that is why that we have set this day aside, the first day of the week, uh, to worship Jesus Christ, the, the Son of God. And, um, you know, I've thought a lot, you know, think a lot every week about God and the church and people and pray for the church all the time. And, you know, we're always fighting a battle. The, the hardest job I think I've ever had is trying to pastor a church, but it is a great honor that God would allow a man to stand and proclaim his word. And um, I think about every time I, I seem to get discouraged, I think about these young children that is soon to reach age accountability. And I want to encourage you. You keep these kids in the house of God because there will come a time that God will speak to their heart and it's, it's your responsibility to have them to where they can hear the word of God. And also to anyone else that has never been saved, I, I'm here today to talk to you also uh, that if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you need to be saved. And I want you to look into the scriptures with me and see what God did. I, I just got up this morning of thanking God. Yesterday, I was thanking God for, for what he did there. I think about this a lot as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost was in heaven before uh, a man was ever created and the foreknowledge of God knowing what was going to happen on this earth and that we needed a Savior and that Savior was Jesus Christ. Think about the love that God had for you to allow His Son to leave heaven and come down here and go to the cross and, and Jesus knew exactly what he was going to do. Now, I want you to think about, and I'll read this scripture in a minute, but I want you to think about the 12 men that he chose to be his disciples. And think about Jesus himself uh, speaking and teaching these men. Now, they left their jobs, and they went and followed the Son of God. And they saw the miracles that Jesus did. Now, now think about this just for a minute. They saw all the work that, that the Son of God did and how that he took care of them and how he would take time and sit down and teach them. And he told them that he was going to go to the cross and give his life and that that would be the sacrifice that God would accept for the sins of the world. Now all this time, he was teaching them this. Now when it come that right before he went to the cross, as, as the soldiers come and took him away, now I want you to think about all these men that, that Jesus had walked with and taught. Peter was one of the ones that, that was so close to him. But whenever they come and they took Jesus, Peter went afar off. And I could just see as they took Jesus, the soldiers took him. And now Peter even stood up there when they first come and he cut one of the, uh, the ears off of one of the people and, and now think about what Jesus had taught them and what Jesus had done. And he, Jesus even took that ear and put it back on and that man was, was made whole. And their eyes were blinded. Peter, he got away back in the shadows as they took Jesus away. He denied him three times and cursed. And then he went out and wept and repented now after Jesus was crucified and put in the tomb and he had told these men he said now listen he said I'm going to the cross I'm going to ri uh, rise again the third day and he said I'm going to take the sacrifice to the father and give it to the father 
And then anybody that believes this and comes and asks for forgiveness can be saved. Now the word has gone out all over this world. You could turn your radio on, your TV on, and I'm sure there's sermons being preached out throughout the world. These men, they doubted. That walked with Jesus now, they doubted. And really didn't believe because I'm going to read to you here that there was a woman uh, 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 named Mary, Mary Magdalene. And she went down to the tomb where they had placed Jesus. And as her and another lady were going down through there, they were talking and said, Now, we, the stone is so big, we can't roll it away ourselves. Now, now, man had took Jesus, and, and I want you to think, man is doubting today. There's probably people listening to me today that, that really doubt what I'm preaching is truth. But, but I want you to go back and look at the cross whenever they, they crucified Jesus. All these soldiers come in, they grabbed him, they took him, uh, they, they beat him. They mocked him and done all these things to the Son of God. And God could have it any second. Now, if somebody grabs your child up today and went to beating it or doing something mean to it, you would flog them in a heartbeat. But God allowed this to happen because he knew that that's the only way that man could be saved. That the, that the, the blood of Jesus Christ is the only sacrifice, the Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world. And if a person don't get saved in this life and they die without salvation, they end up in hell. And God knew that and God knows that and Jesus knew that and that is why the, the price was paid. And it's free for anybody that will come. But these people doubted. The world has doubted ever since before Jesus come and they doubted when he come and the world is still doubting today. But look at this. When they took him to the cross, mocked him and, and done all that they did and, and the Bible said uh, they even went by and they took a spear and gouged it into his side. And, and then after that, he gave up the ghost. He gave his life. He gave it up. And, and then, do you know what happened then? The rock shook, earthquake, and then darkness come up on the world. And do you know what man said then? They had doubted this because they even, they took him and crucified him. They didn't believe he was the son of God. They crucified him. And then after this, and when the, the earth shook and the darkness came upon the earth, they looked at one another and they said, Truly, this was the Son of God that we have crucified. Now look at the doubt. Then after Jesus, uh, before, after he had, before he was crucified, he walked with these men, he taught them, and did all these great works before them, and after they crucified him, took him and put him in the tomb, these men doubted. And I want to read to you what Jesus felt about their doubt. After he had went and gave his life, they doubted. Now I want to tell you this. God wants to save your soul. God wants to save your soul. And we have heard people say, you've got to do this and you've got to do that. Well, let's hear what Jesus says. Let's hear what God says, the one that, that made the way to get to heaven and, and allowed the Holy Ghost to come back here and to lead us into that way. And I want to tell you today, the, the way to heaven is through the Lord Jesus Christ. And every single one of us that's here today, every person that's listening today, 
can be saved and know that you're saved. And I want to tell you this. When God saves your soul, He don't leave you sitting out here on a limb. God puts His stamp upon you and you are sealed through the Holy Spirit and you are on your way to heaven. You can live the rest of your life here upon this earth and walk with God, but when this is over, if you're saved, heaven is your home. Now, there's too much doubt in this world today. We need to take the Word of God and believe it. Now, uh, as we go down through here, and I probably, as usual, won't um, read it all. I've told you most of all what it says about how these women went to the tomb uh, they were going there to anoint the body of Jesus with these spices and stuff. They got there. The tomb was empty. It was empty. And they went up, and there was an angel sitting inside the tomb. And the angel said, He's not here. He is not here. And listen to this. He has risen. The Son of God is risen. And I'm here today to tell you this life is short. This life is a vapor. Jesus come and went to the cross for you, for me. And he says, you know, we hear so much today, people. When people, is, they're, they're off on this limb and out yonder, and, but it's simple. It's simple. And you don't have to do what Madison says. All you got to do is what God says. And do you know what that is? Did you feel the Holy Spirit just sweep in here today? Well, that is the Spirit of God, and that's what I'm asking you to do is to follow Him. And what did He say? He said, come unto me. He said, draw nigh to me. That's what God's doing. God's giving an invitation to the whole world. And He's saying, come. I've talked to my friend back there a lot about the end time. And, 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 uh, people, everything that you can read, everything you can see, it's, it's coming closer and closer and closer. Uh, uh, soon, Jesus is going to step out on the clouds. We've heard this and heard this and heard this. But the disciples heard this. The people then heard this. But listen to what Jesus said to them, and I, I want to read this to you. He said, uh, they went, and they, well, let, let me just jump on to verse 10 of chapter 16. And, and she went and told them that he had been, been with him, him and as they mourned and wept, that she had seen Jesus, been down there. And they, when they had heard that, he was alive and had been seen of her, believed it not. The world is at a point that they really don't believe. Don't really believe, think it's going to go on and on and on and on. Uh, but folks, it's going to come to an end. And after that he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. Now I want to tell you something. Jesus has come to us through the Holy Spirit. Jesus has come to us through the Word of God. And it has went out today. And, and, and let me tell you something. Folks, it's an honor it is a great honor to me and you that we can come. Jesus come. He gave his life. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. He has given us his word. He has allowed the Holy Spirit to come and to draw us unto him. And he's sitting there. And I believe his arms is out to this world. And it is a great honor that you and me can come and bow on our knees before the throne of God and God can meet your need if it's salvation or what. But look here. Let me read this. 
They went and told it unto the residue, neither, now this is the rest of the men that had walked with Jesus, neither believed they them. Jesus said he had told them, he had preached to them and taught them. Now what's he going to say to me and you? Listen, listen, we're going down. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven, the eleven disciples that was left. We know Judas had betrayed, and he was out, out of the picture. As they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he had risen, upbraided to rebuke severely, to rebuke severely or bitterly. That's what that word means. Jesus went and rebuked them for their unbelief. The, the disciples, what is he going to do to this world? What is he going to do to the world as, as God's uh, Holy Spirit stirs and speaks to our heart and as people say no, no, no to God? I want to tell you something. Folks, we ought to come running to God and get on our knees. Uh, God has got salvation, eternal life for you, peace, joy, happiness. Why don't the world want this? Why? Why? Listen to what the Word of God says, and I'm going to close today. He told the disciples, he said, listen. He said, this is the important thing. He said, I've come, I've given my life. He said, I want you to go ye into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth, this is the words out of the mouth of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Now think about this. If you come to Jesus today, you can be saved, and God is offering eternal life to anyone that wants it. Eternal life. Saved from hell. Save for eternity. God is offering that today. And to anyone that's been saved and got out of the will of God, God is offering to you forgiveness. Forgiveness. Don't let unbelief keep you away from God. I'm going to ask you to stand. Would you please, this morning, Obey the Spirit of God as God speaks to your heart. Would you come and kneel in this altar and talk to Him, will you? Calvary, Don't wait around. Come right now. If He spoke to you, will you come? Why did He suffer as no man has ever done? Is he knocking at your door? Will you come right now? And I am the Will you? One. He loves me. What about it? He loves God's me. able to meet your needs right now if you'll come. Will you? What about it? He loves me. Just step out, will you? Well, Just come I on right now. God's speaking. Don't, don't wait around. Just come on right now as God speaks. Me. Young and old, if God spoke to you, come. Will you? Just come on right now. I know God's speaking. Will you? I'm going to ask everyone that's saved to pray that, that the Holy Spirit will have His free reign in this service today. Everybody bow your head if you will. I want to say this. If God's speaking to your heart, 
reach and get somebody by the hand and come to this altar right now and let's pray. Will you? If there's one that's never been saved, if you'll lift your hand up, I want to pray with you. Is there one anywhere that I could pray with? I'm not one to linger, but if God's speaking to you, you need to come and let us pray with you. Is there one anywhere? I want to ask everybody to pray, and let's pray with these that's in the altar. Our Father, I thank you, God, for your word. And I pray, Father, as your word has went out, God, that you would give it increase. Lord, that you would allow it to touch hearts and speak to souls. And God, I pray that if there's any that you have stirred, that they would just ask you, Father, for forgiveness and that you'd come into their heart and save their soul. Thank you for everyone that's bowed wherever they may be, home or in the building, in the altar. God, you know every heart and every need. And God, I thank you today for allowing your precious son to come and go to the cross for me. And I thank you, God, for saving my soul. And I pray, God, that you would help me to be the servant that I need to be for you. And God, I'll give you the praise and the glory for everything because I asked it in the name of Jesus. Amen. I appreciate everyone coming. I'm going to ask the deacons if they'll get the doors opened up. Give them just a second to do that. All the visitors, we're glad you come and just thankful for every one of you. And uh, pray for our service Wednesday night. Now, we've been a little slack on Wednesday night. You know, if, if the preacher tries to preach and get a message, you ought to come. So we encourage you to come. You're free to go. Thank you.